everyone, welcome back to Body Haven Soaps. My name is Darlene and I am the owner and creator of Body Haven Soaps. Um, I started this channel a while ago to help other creators create. On this channel we go over recipes, formulating, and all kinds of information to help you guys develop your own recipes, um, as well as share mine. Um, if that's something that interests you, uh, feel free to subscribe and follow along. Um, today's video is going to be on pH. Now we did a video just a week ago or so on how to test pH, the proper way to test pH, why it's important to test pH. Now I'm going to do this video on how to adjust it. So first of all, here is a pH graph for you to look at. Now you'll notice that seven is a neutral pH. Now a neutral pH is like our water, okay? Um, and then we can go all the way down to a one or a 14, okay? Anything below seven is considered acidic. Anything above seven is considered alkaline. Now our normal skin pH is, you know, between five, 5 5.5. I mean, skin pH is gonna determine, be determined on age of the person um, and the individual, but we're around that level. So most times we try and get our products to a pH level about five, 5.5 5 is usually my goal. Um, however, there are certain ingredients we use that only work within a certain pH range. So it really depends on if you're using those active ingredients or not. Now in your basic recipes, um, you're not going to be using um, specific ingredients that get up to, you know, where you, it only works in a pH of six or it only works in a pH of seven. For the basic recipes, your biggest concern is going to be your preservatives. So depending on what preservative you're using, preservatives work in a certain pH range. That's the importance of reading your pH and knowing whether your preservative works or not. Okay, so I mean, Germal Plus being one of the, a very broad pH range uh, from three to eight, that's a pretty big gap there. So we have lots of room with that preservative. Um, and it's probably the most common preservative um, that we see and people use a lot of um, because of that wide range. But if you're using specific preservatives, um, that only work at a certain pH range, you need to be able to adjust your pH to be able to make that preservative or active ingredients effective. We also don't want a product that is going to be extremely alkaline and we don't want something that is extremely acidic. Um, neutral being water at seven is probably about as high as I would go. Um, I mean, there is certain ingredients that only work at a certain range, okay? So that's for you guys to make sure you understand your ingredients, you are reading the manufacturer's directions, you understand what preservatives um, you're using and what pH range they're working in. You can't just throw a preservative in there and call it preserved. Um, it has to work with the ingredients you're using, it has to work with the pH range that your product is in, whatever that's designed to be in. Um, some of our thickeners and things like that, they only work um, at a certain pH range where we may have to use a specific preservative that will work at that pH range. So that's why it's important. All right, so first of all, let's um, start going over how you will raise and lower. So the very first thing you wanna do is when you have made a product, you're going to test the pH of that product. Now, it's really hard to determine, you know, we can look at the ingredients and look at the pH ranges that they're in. And, you know, if I use something, an ingredient that has a really high pH range, I'm guessing probably in my end product, I'm going to have to adjust it. But guessing doesn't work with pH, you have to be able to test it. All right, so, and once we blend all those ingredients together, it's really hard to tell where that pH range is going to land, okay? Um, or if that pH range is going to drift. So that's why we do our stability testing, which I do have a video about the stability testing as well, guys. All right, so once you have your product made, your finished product, you're happy with it, all of those types of things, you are going to take the pH of that specific product. Okay, 
Now, let's say, I mean, this is a lotion that I have in this dish here. Um, and lotions, we want it to be at that 5.5 most times, okay? Um, so we're gonna go with that whole 5.5. So this is actually a, a store-bought lotion. I haven't made any lotion yet. So this is a store-bought lotion that I have here um, that we're going to test and play with today. But I'm just gonna show you in this video how to lower and how to raise your pH, okay? So the very first thing we wanna do is we wanna test this pH. Okay guys, so once you have the pH of your lotion that you've created and you know where you're sitting, you'll know whether you need to go up or you need to go down to get around that 5.5 um, or whatever it is that you're trying to hit for your range of your pH, okay? Now to take the lotion um, pH down, we will actually use a citric acid solution. Um, this is 50-50, so 50% citra citric acid dissolved in 50% distilled water. Okay, and we mix this together, we dissolve it completely, and this is what I will use to drop the pH in my product. If I want to raise the pH in my product, I'm going to use a solution of sodium hydroxide, 10% um, with 90% distilled water. All right, and this is what I will use to raise it. Now, I have seen in lots of videos out there, guys, where people pre-make this and they store it. I'm not saying you can't. Um, I mean, this should be your, you know, high enough in pH that nothing's gonna, no bacteria and stuff's gonna build in it. Bacteria needs a pH range as well. Um, however, I err on the side of caution. When I, I usually, when I was in full swing of making all my stuff um, and I was readjusting, I would make a new batch of each of these every week. Um, but there's nothing, it's not a lot of material you need. Like honestly, when you adjust this, we're doing it one drop at a time. So making it up at the end of each batch, um, when you're going to be adjusting your pH is perfectly fine, okay? Now we want to make sure that we have these completely dissolved and every there's no crystals or anything else in them. Okay, now if I want to raise the pH, let's say I tested this cream and it was at a three and I need to raise it to that 5.5, I will use the sodium hydroxide to raise it. Now a lot of people have some fear of using the sodium hydroxide, um, but remember we use it in soap and things like that, it, it does break down. Now yes, it is dangerous when it's just mixed like this, but once we mix it into the things, we're not using it at a level. Um, it's the it's the alkali of it that creates that hazard to the skin. So we're actually modifying that. So don't be hesitant to use it. You need to be able to adjust your pH. But we're using one or two drops at a time. We're not using this whole container. Um, and your stearic acid, you guys, um, we mix it at a different concentration um, than our lye. Um, however, we're just using one or two drops. Don't put a whole bunch in. You don't want to be going up and down and up and down and up and down. You want to just either raise it to where you need it or lower it to where you need it. The more things you add in here, the higher percentage of your batch becomes. And we know how important that is to our preservatives and our other ingredients. Okay, so the sodium hydroxide and distilled water is 10% sodium hydroxide, 90% distilled water. The citric acid is 50% citric acid, 50% distilled water. You will mix these up, make sure they're completely dissolved. All right, let's get into testing this and I'm going to show you how easy it is to raise and lower the pH of your product. Okay guys, so the previous video we went over how to use your pH meters, okay? And if you are using the test strips with a lotion, I would suggest these plastic ones. Um, just remember this will give you right to the point. So to get to the 5.5, this is gonna be a little easier to read. This is going to give you an approximate, but you can still be in a safe level with these, right? Because I mean, the normal skin is 5 to 5.5, so as long as I'm getting around that 5 or between a 5 and a 6, I know that this is going to be adequate and close enough for my preservatives, 
okay? You start getting into the more technical stuff, so you'll have to get one of these. But for your basic recipes, these strips will work if that's what you're using, okay? So let's turn this on, and we're going to check the pH of this lotion. So I'm just going to stir it in and get it all mixed in. And I'm going to make sure that the globe is completely submerged. Remember with this pH meter, you guys, that it does adjust the temperature, so it does take a little bit longer, but I'm gonna have a more accurate reading. Okay, so you guys can see, hopefully that is at a 6.69 and this is a store-bought um, lotion that I have purchased for this demonstration so it is fairly high um, but not you know where it's it could be skin irritating at that level but remember that our skin has uh, our skin actually does have a natural occurrence where it will readjust so even though the pH is that high um, they may have it that high because it works with that specific preservative um, that they've used or what have you but it's not unsafe as long as it works with your ingredients there's some things that we make that will be um, a seven for that active ingredient to to actually function and work Okay, um, I can think of a, you know, a few ingredients that I use that have to be at a higher pH. And that's okay, all right? But it has to work with your ingredients. So that's the only thing, I would always go for the 5.5 unless I'm using a specific ingredient that I'm looking to bring that specific property um, and I need a certain pH, okay? But we don't want it crazy high or crazy low. So. Right now, this is testing at a 6.69 of a pH level. So if I want to higher this pH, because we're just using this as a demonstration, we're going to use our sodium hydroxide, 90% distilled water, 10% sodium um, hydroxide. And we are going to just put in, we'll put in three drops just for the sake of an example here. And then we're going to stir that in really well. Um, if I was doing a big batch of this, I'd actually use a blender to make sure that it got mixed in well, but this will be good enough for a demonstration. So you're gonna make sure that that gets mixed in really, really well, you guys, when you guys are changing your pH. Okay, so now that we've put three drops, okay, that's all I put in of that solution, and we'll check the pH again. Okay, so with that three drops, I brought this lotion up to 6.87. Okay, so that, I mean, we want to do that gradual climb. We don't want to leap ahead. Um, and really, you guys, remember that the type of ingredients in your product will determine how fast this moves it up or this moves it down. So you really wanna start out with just a few drops. I keep notes as I'm making my product of how much I had to adjust the pH of it because then it's easier for me to determine when I'm remaking that formula, okay? So you can see that three drops stirred in there, brought up that pH. And now to lower that pH, okay, we're going to take the citric acid, 50% citric acid and 50% distilled water. And we are going to put in, let's put in six drops of this. We're gonna stir that in really well.
We'll test it now that I've put those six drops in there. I'm going to stir this around, make sure I get it well covered. And let's try this again. Okay, and I dropped that down to a four. 0.94 with those drops of the citric acid. So you can see how well this works. Um, I would always suggest you guys that you start out with one or two drops and you slowly adjust because you, like I said, you don't want to be going up and down and up and down because you're getting too much of the adjusters in there. So one or two drops at a time, document what you're doing and keep a record of it for when you create your formula again. But that's how easy it is to use these two ingredients. Now there is other ingredients out there that you can use um, to lower and raise your pH levels in your product. However, you guys, um, these are the two most available and easiest to use and perfectly safe to use to adjust your pH, okay? So that's what I would suggest, um, but you can do more research and you can you know, figure out what it is that's going to work for you. But that's how easy this is. Now remember that um, types of ingredients you use may need a certain pH range, uh, especially our preservatives to make sure they're effective. Um, that's why testing your pH and being able to adjust your pH is extremely important. And when we are adjusting it, we want to do it in small increments because remember now we're changing um, our total batch size um, even though it's a few drops, we are adding other stuff to it. So we're changing that product slightly. But we, so we don't want to add a whole bunch of this in. One or two drops, blend well, test. Okay? And you're going to continue to do that until you get it to that pH level. But you can see how fast or slow, so um, that these two things will adjust that. Okay? And different ingredients will change how much of one thing changes the other. So always be testing, always start out slow, and it's pretty simple and easy to do. All right, so once again, you guys, if you have any questions about this, uh, make sure you put them in the comment box below. And um, hopefully you guys found this information useful and we can easily adjust um, your pH levels using these two simple things. All right, hope you guys have a great day.